Good day, welcome back to our channel, Live with Facts Therapy on the um, episode of Healing Through Storytelling. We are here again with another story. My name remains Papule Tolulope, a clinical psychologist and also a relationship counsellor. Thank you for your support so far. We really do appreciate you. I'm here again with my co-host. Morris Jimmy by name. Hope you're doing well and I hope you are liking the page making comments and sharing as well, which will bring lots of goods and healings down to our couple's homes. Thank you very much. Today, we're bringing you a new story. Baba Jesha's uh, scandal has brought about a new story whereby a lady came out to tell about what really happened some time ago, talking about pedophiles. And I'll be giving my clinical psychologist here to shed more light into it please stay tuned thanks jimmy so i'll be talking about paraphilia it's a sexual disorder um in psychology you know in psychology we have different disorder we have sexual disorder mood disorder so today we'll be talking about sexual disorder and um the one we we'll focus on is paraphilia so what is paraphilia paraphilia they have this recurrent sexual um, arousing fantasies, sexual urges or behavior that can involve non-human objects, that can involve suffering or even inflicting suffering on another person or children or making use of children or, or other non-consenting person. That's uh, when we talk about non-consenting person, that's when we talk about rape. So under par um, paraphilia, we have different types of sexual disorders. So we have fetishism, that is fetishism. That is when you see someone um, acquiring objects, inanimate objects. Maybe it can be panties, it can be bra, and having fantasies, having urges, sexual urges with it. Make it as in, and it always comes with masturbation. When they acquire these objects, they derive their own sexual um, desires and fulfillment from it. Then we'll talk about transvestic fetishism. That's when this object in particular, they might um, wear it themselves. Wear it. They, uh, they they get fulfillment from it. They wear it and they also masturbate. Then I'll talk about exhibitionism. You see them. You can just see them outside. They will just open up themselves, open up their private part for people to view them. In this process, they get their satisfaction. We have sexual machismo. That's insisting on the act of being humiliated or some people, when you even abuse them, when you humiliate them, when you beat them, they get pleasure from it. So the last one I'll be talking about is pedophilia. That is when you see an adult taking advantage of a child. Maybe it can be through penetration, through fondling with their sexual parts, with their private parts, manipulating these children. And this is from the age of zero to 13 years most of the time so today we have a story we'll be talking about that is the story of mary and remember that the names we are using here are not real names so we'll be talking about um, the story of mary how she was being abused when she was between the age of three to four so please stay tuned and follow this story and i believe that you have one or two things to pick from it thank you yes Back to a discussion. Pedophiles are real. You have to believe it. Yes, you must believe it because of uh, the case of Babai Jesha scandal has brought about this lady, Mary. Put this in your mind. That's not a real name. She came out to share her past experience to reach out with a liberal with facts therapy and uh, in order to share her own story for people to learn from. Now, my name is Mary. I was sexually abused when I was little, three to four years of age. My mom was a fashionista, so I always appear neat and beautiful whenever people see me. And now, whenever I fall sick, my mom will take me along with her to her office so she can monitor me health-wise. Then this man, the bachelor, working together with her in her office. So whenever he sees me, he calls me his wife beautiful names, these and that, and my mother never suspected anything. Now, in his office, behind it was this main place, he used the office, now somehow isolated. I remember he do takes me there to play with me, 
and to ease my mom's burden. He buys me things, sweets, biscuits, and the likes. Now, he started by fondling my private parts. Now, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Fondling my, with my private parts. Now, this routine occurs each and every time I go to that office. I was a little bit, and I never knew it was wrong or right. I remember I didn't share it with my mother because I thought it was a normal thing. I accepted it as a way of life, as a normal thing that it's supposed to be. Now, I hope you're going along with me. At the same age, there was another man, this time around, an elderly man, as she put it, a married to be precise, and was a family friend to my aunt. We do visit my auntie anytime we are on holidays. She was a businesswoman, and this is a family friend, was also a family friend to so them. Now, he do ask us to go play in his office in the afternoon. This man has an office. He will keep me on his laps. He will fondle with my private parts, even while attending to people, because they won't see us. The table has a covered place that do cover my lower private parts. You will only see that I'm sitting on these laps. He bundles with my private parts sometimes, have sex with me by making me sit on his face. One thing I kept asking myself till now was what stopped me from telling someone, even my mother, even my aunt. Can't remember. This act kept on repeating itself, even with other family friends. It was like a no to me. I was like a robot. I couldn't say no. I couldn't reject it. I couldn't stop it. This affected me a lot. I got hold of myself when I was already in SS1. Sexually, I don't enjoy sex. It was like a routine to me. Like an act, do what you want to do, get up, and you leave the place, and that is all. Now, until I get married to my husband, and with him, I started enjoying sex. Now, I want you to get this thing. Not all children can speak up. My mom was a devoted mother and so friendly to me. But I couldn't open up to her because I didn't know that I was being exposed to a bad thing. I can't remember my childhood well, but I remember this experience well. I can't forget it. And each time it comes to my heart, it breaks my heart. Now, my happened at a very early age. I grew up with it, so I was able to acknowledge myself that it was a bad thing. I've grown to learn that it's a good, it is good to start sex education at a very early stage with a child, with children. Now, and not to trust my kind with anyone. Name it in the office, family, friend, uncle, brother, come to think of it. It is my loss. It destroyed my childhood. It hurts me when I can't say how I was this virgin. It hurts me a lot. I'm a grown woman now. When I go and meet the man and ask him why he abused me when I was small, where is my evidence? I need evidence to make a proof, to show that he did this and he helps me so bad each time I come to think of it. I see people online saying a lot of things. If you've not experienced this evil act, you will never understand what it feels like to be hot at a very tender age. I would like you to learn from this lesson out there. Parents, to be precise, to call upon your child, your female child, let them know this that it's wrong. Please make sure you like this page, give your comments, share it, and stay tuned. Thank you. It's a really sad story. Yes, it is. I hope we've been following those following um, Jimmy as he has been telling us about the experience of Mary. It's not what we can just... There are so many people that are experiencing this act and it will keep coming up we are not going to say that video files are going to stop tomorrow they are going to stop today and one thing i want us to know is that 
nobody is to be trusted. Anybody that has been a victim of sexual abuse, let us check it very well. We'll notice that it always uh, it revolves around the family. Exactly. So you cannot just say because they are siblings, no. you just have to leave them. Not at all. No. No. Because uh, is there, is there uncle now? Abba. No, nobody should be trusted. And I remember I, I watched online that's a Baba Dishas confession that um, it's the devil, it's the devil. Isha issue, Isha issue. No, it's a psychological problem, yes. it's a psychological disorder. But because of did I even say Nigeria, we don't we don't believe in all these things, even outside sexual abuse, outside sexual disorder. There are so many disorders that we have, even depression. Yes. But people they, they don't take it serious. No, they don't. You will see don't. a schizophrenia and they will take him to um, church okay. for deliverance okay. here in Nigeria. <laughs> Something that is supposed to like take him to a psychiatric hospital for him to be attended, attended to. But we hide this religious mask, we always hide ourselves. Yes, it's a spiritual attack. It's not supposed to be. We have to accept ourselves the way we are. Mm -hmm. We have to like recognize, okay, this thing is going on, it has been. And before you can even diagnose that this person has a sexual abuse, it has, it has to have occurred for a period of six months at least. Exactly. Before exactly. you can say it's a sexual disorder, before you can say that this person has this kind of problem. But um, the word pedophile is like a slang to us. We don't know, as in the way everybody is just saying it, everybody is just talking about it, but we don't know what these children, what they are passing through. Mm -hmm. Some people, they will be abused yes. and automatically they will turn to sex workers. Yes, they will exactly. enjoy it. But right story, from that yes, start. That start. Okay. But from the story of Mary, she didn't enjoy it. Because her own started at the age of three. You know, some children at the age of three, they cannot even speak well. No, not at all. Not to talk of you having sexual intercourse with them. They don't know whether it is wrong, wrong or, or right. right. This, our own experience is that she did enjoy sex. She does not even know the meaning of sex. She just, she felt okay. that it's a normal routine. Yeah, it's a normal routine. But another person will handle it differently. So the way Mary experienced it, the way she handled it, Another child might not experience it that same way. way. That same way exactly. so I really do feel for Mary. I really do feel for her. And this story is not what you can just be telling everybody. I'm abused. I was sexually abused. No, this it's not what you can come out easily yes, to yes. tell you, coming out in the public, to make people know that oh, this is how I was abused yeah. by this person. But it needs to be tackled. Yeah. It needs to be tackled. It needs to be looked into carefully. Most especially mothers out there. Yeah. Taking proper care, attention. You don't let go of your eyes out of your female child. But no one is to be trusted. No one. No one is to be, no trusted. Is to be trusted. So you need to, you need to, you need to keep, keep an eye on your female child. You need to keep an eye on your female child. The way this story is. There was a phrase you read as okay. a paragraph that she didn't even know. She does not have the experience of um so how you got this virgin yes so yes. she must have been hearing her friend talk about it but she she doesn't have a story to tell because her sexual what, what would i be call it it was destroyed by this act mm. so let's be guided and nobody is perfect nobody so let's be careful so to wrap it up i hand over to jimmy yes you've all had this and i want you to learn something from this just as tolu has told you earlier on please don't forget to like this page, give your comments. Your comments can bring healing as well. It might get across to Mary as well. You never can tell. And also do remember to share. Now, stay tuned and see you next time. Bye for now. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We really do appreciate you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, I would advise that um, in dealing with these children, in dealing with our children, we are not just supposed to assume that they know everything, that they are supposed to speak up. Like uh, Mary said, her mom was friendly, but that didn't even encourage her to speak out. So to, for us to have avoid all these um, sexual abuse or all these sexual acts, I'll advise us that we start sex education very early. When we even hear, when children, children at a very tender age, when they, they, they talk about the part of the body, that's when they recite it, you will not even hear penis. You won't hear it. But encourage your children. Tell them this is your private part and it is called penis. Even in Yoruba, you, you hear them say that it's kukuru. What is kukuru? Tell them. Say it out. 
Don't just don't just don't hide. Don't hide anything from them. Let them know and make it clear to them that no, this is your private part. These are your private parts. Nobody is to touch your private part. Always remind them about this and let there be um, the familiarity. Maybe you have a lot of family members coming around. Monitor their movements. Monitor these children. Let them be too much. Too much familiarity should be discouraged. Let them know this is your uncle. This person that is coming around is just a family friend because in especially in Yoruba land, any elderly person that comes to the house, we always refer to them as uncles, as aunties, as let there be a distinguished um what, what will I even call it? Name. This is this person, this is this person. Not everybody is your uncle. And encourage your children to speak up. Don't say you are disrespecting. No. Don't shut them up. Don't shut, don't tell them that you are not supposed to say this. Correct them in love so that when an incident happens, they will be able to come to you and they will have it at the back of their mind that you are going to listen to them. You are going to help them out. Then any child that you know that this child has been abused, don't just keep silent about it. These children, they might not know how to interpret their emotions, their feelings. You can take them to a psychologist, a counselor, let them talk about it. Don't shut them up. Don't say that it's going to tarnish the family image. Help them. It's good for them to have opened up to you. You are so lucky if you have a child that opens up to you. So encourage them so that when another incident happens, it might not even be about sexual abuse. They will be able to come to you. So I want us to be mindful of all this and I pray that God will help us in taking care of these beautiful seeds that God has imposed in our care in Jesus name thank you so much